was Wayne Good. So I uh, don't talk about other religions specifically because uh, I'm not a part of their religion. So I don't need to be a critic of somebody else's religion. So I only focus on the religion that I was born and raised into and who has betrayed me. And not just betrayed, but I mean maliciously betrayed. We're at over 15% for last week, as of today's reporting. It just keeps going up. If I don't use the Book of Mormon, Mormons will throw a fit. So instead of Matthew 7, I go to 3 Nephi 14, verse 15. Beware of false prophets. Now, Oaks dealt with that a couple of conferences ago, trying to say, well, it's false teachers. It's not referring to me. I'm not guilty of this. And that's part of the deception they pull on Mormons, is that the scriptures give examples, not just in direct text, but parables, stories, and other examples for us to understand the doctrine and not make a mistake. When it says, judge not, well, what is Jesus doing the whole time and telling us to do? Well, he's giving stories and parables about how we can judge. Here's another one. Beware of false prophets. We need to judge people in order to determine whether they're a false prophet. So this whole concept of, oh, you can't judge me. I'm the pre I'm a president of the church. I almost slipped and said the president, but I'm a president. A counselor in the presidency. <laughs> uh, you know he's just aching to take over. And so this, this everyone else but me syndrome and abusing scriptures for the purpose of violating other people's life, liberty, and property, uh, that's a fundamentalist trait. And all religions have their fundamentalists. I, I even the Catholics, as uh, the new Supreme Court Justice, and, and we all know she's going to get it, is a part of the fundamentalist Catholics. But uh, because things are in story form and they're not specifically said uh, in specific detail, People think that they can excuse themselves and say, "Oh, I'm not. Hey, no, not me." Uh, and others are quick and hasty to accuse people of being, "Oh, you're a false prophet. You're a wolf in sheep's clothing." That type of thing, because yeah, that's what it talks about here. Who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Well, nobody's an actual wolf. Just like QAnon goes around telling people, Oh, the deep state, they're alien lizards. <laughs> you know, the, the TV series V was awesome, but I'm not going to take it literally. I mean, come on. And yet people are getting fooled by this Russian propaganda-backed organization. And likewise do Mormons get fooled in the church. They don't see their prophets as being anything but good and righteous, even better than them. And that therefore God prepared that man for that position. Yeah, no. <laughs> no. No. It was a quid pro quo as Kimball said, hey, thanks for uh, saving my life with the heart surgery. How would you like to become an apostle? And we'll make you an apostle before Oaks so that you can 
become the president one day. You know, seriously? I mean, come on. I mean, that's delving into the supernatural, superstitious realm. It's, it completely violates Mormon doctrinal precept of consequences for our actions. And that's how you can identify a false prophet. Is by the consequences of their actions, by their words. And so, in that regard, Oakes was correct when he said it's our words that we will know by the resulting consequences, the, the results of following them. And so you have a belief first that you speak, write, sign, communicate. Then there's the action part. What do you do to make that word into reality? How do you make it come to pass? And so, yes, scriptures abound in that. Noah build an ark. Okay, builds an ark. He hears the word, does the action, finishes the project. And the result of finishing the project saves his whole family. In Mormon scripture, Noah tries to tell others, hey, I'm being told there's going to be a flood. I'm going to build a boat. I recommend you guys do too. And they all laughed and mocked and said, oh, it's not raining. I don't see any rain. You know, just deniers and, and uh, abusers and science deniers. And so, yes, the consequences of their unbelief led to their inaction, which led to their death as the consequences. That's the simple process in religion that is taught in the scriptures. You have the word, you either believe it, you don't believe it, then you act or you don't act, and then the consequences follow. Life or death. And it may seem kind of extreme, because sometimes you wake up in the morning and you say, oh, I feel like I should wear the yellow outfit today. Who cares about the consequences? You know, you might have somebody say, Oh, that is an awesome outfit, man. That is perfect. That's not the consequences that you're looking for. We're talking about life and death consequences. Amos 3.7 type stuff. That when there's danger coming, that you are warned in advance that you then believe, you take action, and the consequences are you've saved your life because you listen to the warning. And when you deal with aesthetics, and also, it's just an opinion. And so you can have people say, oh, you're a loser for wearing yellow. Oh, don't you know it's after Labor Day that you can't wear white or whatever the rule is, which is not a rule. And so you just, those are just opinions. When people get so upset that they make snide remarks over, oh, I see all men are, are in the Oscar nominations this year. Congratulations. So what? Steven Seagal understood the concept very well in his very first movie. I think, well, no, it was... Was it Above the Law? <sighs> kind of bug me now. It's where he goes into the grocery store, or the bodega, and, and uh, the, the clerk isn't watching the Oscars, and so Steven Seagal makes a comment, Aren't you watching the Oscars tonight? And then, yeah, I got everything right here. Sex, drugs. <laughs> and so, yeah, then you get the, the gang members coming in. And 
causing havoc, and Steven Seagal kicks their butt. But uh, he understood his movie was not going to make an Oscar. And so he made fun of the Oscars in his movie. And so for people to get all stressed that they tried their best to conform to Oscar judges rules and guidelines for uh, a, an award-winning movie I mean seriously that's what is driving you to make movies not the inspiration of something that you think would be beneficial to mankind you're more concerned about whether you win Focus on what's important in life. Life, liberty, property. Benefiting mankind. Warning mankind. And so, let's take a look at Nelson. His fruits. He came out in the first conference. Said, hey, we're building temples. We're going to build one in Russia. And you may think, oh great, the gospel's going forth through all the world. Well, what you didn't know is that prior to Nelson, the church would not build new temples unless the church membership growth in an area justified it. The church was conservative to the point where they required the tithing of the members of an area, and will not talking about how tithing is a protection racket, but the tithing of the number of converted elders who were ready to go to the temple, or prospective elders in some cases, I guess, uh, were demonstrating that they are worthy for a temple. And the reason why is because a certain number, which I think is over 30,000, 35,000, something like that, uh, in Utah at least, uh, justifies the building of a temple with that money from the tithing of that group in that area. And so I'm looking at the stats after that announcement, after that's posted online, and I'm seeing 23,000 members for all of Russia. Wow. All of Russia, 23,000, and then other temples across the world. And I'm looking and I'm seeing less than 23,000, sometimes 18,000, sometimes 13,000. I'm going, what's going on? And now I see they are purposely escalating the number of temples, not concerned about how to financially pay for it. that kind of an activity in the long term is very dangerous. Do you remember the 2008 economic collapse? Yeah. That's what the church would be heading towards unless they knew something was going on in the near future. See this I know because we have other examples that demonstrate the consequences of fiscal irresponsibility, fiscal negligence. Negligence? That was an interesting twister of the tongue. I don't think I can ever repeat that. <laughs> and so when Nelson keeps putting out more and more temples, as we know, at the beginning of this year, we heard the news reports, church is losing membership. Uh-oh, but yet more temples in April, now October. They just keep generating more and more and more temples. The reason why is because they get to own the land. They know something's coming. And you may think, yeah, because the Lord is guiding them and blah, blah, blah. It's not fiscally responsible. They tell us, despite the economic hardships, don't go into debt. 
Well, we need to. We're hurting. You won't help us. <laughs> so, you know, a double standard going on. They preach what they don't practice themselves. And so, that's one way you know that their fruit is going to turn out bad. Because if they do know something, why aren't they warning the membership? Why are they saying, hey, if somebody like Travis can figure it out, more power to them. And that's the danger. Is that Amos 3.7 specifically requires them to announce warnings in advance not as they're happening you know lion mauls the village and the leader of the village then gets up and announces to all the people who are getting mauled by the lions hey guys uh, I'm getting word from my intelligence <laughs> operatives that lions are on their way and and uh, we need to be prepared little too late just like Nelson when coronavirus hit no advance warning no immediate shutdown by the church he let Mormons believe there was nothing to fear then he opened up too early he came out with a video saying oh we're gonna be temporarily closed and so this will be an excellent time for you to spend time with your families at home and have the gospel home-centered thing I did yeah, well, domestic violence has gone up. But, uh, again, you have Mormons who say, oh, well, church is opening. Governor Herbert is opening businesses. Going back to school. I guess it's all clear. Nothing to worry about. Oops, 15% now. That's red. You look at the map of Utah and the coronavirus stats, red, with a couple places orange. And you wonder, why are we not being shut down again? Why is the church still in operation? Why didn't Herbert come out and tell us to, to stay home, stay safe? That's his fruit. He didn't. He's now blaming you guys, like I told you he would. If you get sick, it's your fault now. Never mind what I did. He's blaming you. It's his fruit. Herbert's responsible for the state of Utah. Nelson is responsible for the church. over 500 dead and rising rapidly we still have over 7,000 Utahns who have tested positive who have not recovered who are not hospitalized who are not dead over 7,000 now roaming Utah thinking everything's fine because I'm not showing symptoms or I'm not needing a respirator again they blame you because the health professionals told us when somebody tests positive even if they're asymptomatic if they test positive you cannot have them going out into the public you've got to quarantine them remove them from society until they test negative three times in a row. Herbert chose not to do that. So again, his beliefs are exposed as his actions demonstrate those beliefs and the consequences followed. Your deaths. Likewise for Nelson. Nelson believed, hey, we're going to have a fast. 
okay, we're going to have another fast. Oh, we were torn. We want to provide safety. I just heard today that my ward is finally doing video, video, online videos of the sacrament meeting. And I replied to Russ, well, why didn't they do that from the beginning? We've had the technology the whole time. Why didn't they do that from the beginning? And that's just for those who want to watch from home. There are still those who go to the church. And then you find out that Trump had been purposely getting us infected. Which then begs the question, what about Herbert? How much did he know and when did he know it? Because we heard the reports that Trump was extorting the governors. Open up businesses. Open up the schools. I'm not giving you funding unless you do that. Did Herbert give in to the extortion demands of our president? Sure looks like that. He put your lives at risk for Trump's image? For Trump's reputation? You don't follow corrupt orders. Everybody knows that now. It's now a staple in our legal system. That's why we have whistleblower laws. Is so that when a leader gives corrupt orders, people need to stand up and say no. And if they can't do that without direct repercussions, then they have options to whistleblow. That's what my lawsuit against the church is all about. I'm being denied having a prosecutor's office take my case to court for criminal activity. So I have to do it through the civil courts in the federal court. I'm saying no. I will not do what you're telling us me to do. I will not conform and comply to your corrupt orders. How many other Mormons are brave enough to say, No, enough is enough. My children and my family's safety comes first. I will not allow our government and my religion to extort us. And they did. That's why Utahns didn't go home as they all claimed all oh, my job, you know, it's, it's a necessary job. No. The money was driving it. You get more money by staying at work, risking your life, than staying at home and getting the $600 a month. They compromised us to put our lives at risk. That's what compromised is. Russians call it compromise. It's where the leaders are corrupt and in so doing cause the followers to either be corrupt themselves or to be punished. And they don't do it just one way. They do multiple ways. The whole system in Russia is like that. That's what Trump has turned America into now. We had it in separate ways, but for the most part, people could avoid it. Some of the time, not everybody, but many people could. But not anymore. Everybody is compromised. Everybody is extorted. You have to go back to work. 
if you want money now. The $600 is gone. It's over. And they're not going to give us another stimulus. They're not going to do another 600 Republicans tried to pass a 200, 100, 300. And so this is why I've done what I've done with, as an LDS critic. I'm warning because the leaders of government and religion aren't. I know what's coming and I can guarantee you it's not a flood. It's worse. And we're in it. And it's worse. And it's gonna get worse. Because it's not over. And still I have people dying, getting sick, financially suffering, losing loved ones, and they still refuse to listen to me. Because their pride says, oh, you're an anti-Mormon, Travis. I'm not listening to you. Mormons would rather die than listen to me. But that's why I'm an LDS critic. Contend against no church but the church of the devil. I found out the Mormon church is the church of the devil. By their fruits, I know them. No Mormon can gaslight me. No Mormon can abuse me. No Russian can pretend to be a Mormon. It just doesn't work. So I, I don't don't know what to do now, guys. Trump's already told us he's gonna have martial law on election day. He's cured. It's a miracle. Hallelujah. He's the chosen one, right? Nelson couldn't do it. Nelson couldn't cure coronavirus. Trump did. And so, you know, I told you, he has the vaccine. That's how much worse it is. If you understand what it means for Trump to have the vaccine. We don't have it. The pharmaceutical companies say they're not done yet. They're not ready. Yet Trump is cured. With his greasy, poor diet, his lack of exercise, having strokes, near death in his old age, and yet he's cured. Seriously? Didn't need a ventilator? Just minor coughs? Yeah, it was all a show. Because he's supposed to be dead, like Herman Cain. He just played everybody. You can't defy the laws of physics. You can't defy science. But that's what Trump has done. <gasps> See, Travis? It's a miracle. It's a supernatural miracle. Science is false. <clears throat> no. The only answer is Trump has the vaccine. Unless all of a sudden he dies. But there's usually a worsening progression where he has to be ventilated. Alrighty. Is anybody even listening 
because by s next Sunday, that's supposed to be the last day for an exodus to occur. Is it going to happen?